Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at another mini PC. This one came in from Pepper Jobs. It's a newer company that uh, reached out to me and this thing is kind of neat. It doesn't look or feel all that different than other mini PCs, but they've done a couple of things on the engineering side that I think you all might find interesting. They were able to squeeze a little more performance out of its N4100 Gemini Lake processor. I'll be exploring what makes this one a little bit different in this review, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Pepper Jobs. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this little mini PC is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this should sell for around $300, give or take. It's got that quad-core N4100 Gemini Lake CPU built in, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, but it is all upgradable. Uh, they do have these little panels here that go on the bottom, but I took them off so you can see what we got in here. Now, I upgraded mine from 4 gigs to 8 gigs because it only comes in single-channel configuration when you get it. And my advice on these little mini PCs is to always run them in dual channel because they'll perform better. Uh, so I was a little disappointed for a performance kind of oriented device that they didn't include uh, dual channel RAM. It was a little finicky on the RAM as well. So this Samsung DDR4 stick that uh, I got in here was one they recommended I pair up with the included stick of RAM. I'll put a link down below to the one that I bought in case you're looking at getting one of these things. You will get much better performance when you go up to the eight gigs or at least run uh, dual channel memory as I am here. And then over here you've got an M2 slot for additional storage. So if the 64 gigs isn't enough, uh, you can pop in an M2 SATA drive here to expand it. Now you can't upgrade the processor on this, but they do have a very intriguing cooling mechanism inside that's designed to prevent the computer from underclocking when it gets hot. So what they've done here is they've put in a copper heat sink and a pretty nice little fan that you can see from our extras channel teardown of the device. And what this does is it keeps the processor running at its 2.3 gigahertz max speed all the time if you need that amount of horsepower. So if you are playing a game or doing some advanced computations or whatever on your little mini PC, it will be consistent all the time because they've basically turned off the underclocking that many other devices running with this same chip tend to do. Uh, the N4100 can often be found in fanless computers. And when you don't have a fan, the only way to cool the chip down is to slow it down. On this one, they gave it a cooling system so that slowdown doesn't need to happen. And we'll take a look and see how that impacts performance in a little bit. Now there is a ton of connectivity on this one and we'll take a look at the back here first. Uh, now I want to draw your attention to these three ports here because you can output three 4K displays at 60 Hertz simultaneously. Uh, we tried it out a little bit earlier. We connected up four 4K displays and each of them was running at the full resolution and at that 60 frames per second. That was very impressive. Uh, so you do have a display port out here. Uh, you need to use a DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable for this. I did try to use a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter first. It didn't like that. Uh, so after I plugged in a DisplayPort uh, to mini DisplayPort cable to my monitor, everything was running fine after that. You have HDMI here, of course, that will work fine with any HDMI cable. And then you've got the USB Type-C port here that will also output 4K video. Uh, you do need to make sure that you get a USB Type-C to DisplayPort adapter or a USB Type-C to HDMI 2.0 adapter to get the full frame rate and resolution. Uh, but again, we were able to accomplish all of that. And it was really impressive to see this many outputs on a little mini PC like this. We haven't seen that before. Uh, the USB-C port can also take in power. So if you have a dock or something like that, you could plug the dock in get video out over that cable, have all the data going back and forth, and actually power the computer with a single cable. So that was another neat thing to see on this, a full service USB-C port. So good stuff there. You got gigabit ethernet over here. If you wanna plug in the regular power adapter, you can do that over there. They of course include that in the box. You get a headphone microphone jack there. On the other side here, you have another USB-C port. Uh, this is data only though, and it's USB 3.0 speeds, but you do have another one there. Two USB 3.0 ports, an SD card slot here if you wanna augment that onboard storage. 
power button is there. Nothing here on the front and on the side. You've got venting for the fan and cooling system, a BIOS reset, and a Kensington lock. So good stuff here on the connectivity for sure. Let's take a look now and see how this performs. So we'll kick things off with some web browsing and watching some video on my YouTube channel. We've got a 1080p video running at 60 frames per second. No drop frames there, a very nice experience for YouTube and probably Netflix and other uh, streaming services as well. We also visited the nasa.gov homepage and there everything sprung to life very, very quickly. It felt very snappy and responsive and everything was rendering as you would expect it to. And it's been really impressive to see how far these low end processors have come. It was a very good experience on this PC overall, and you probably won't see any of the throttling you might see if you uh, really start pushing the limits on it. And again, we'll test that out uh, in a couple of minutes here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 64.98 on the version 1.0 of that test, uh, 38.23 on version 2. And you can see here it's very competitive with the uh, lower end Intel Gemini Lake J4005 NUC we looked at not too long ago. Uh, that NUC is clocked a little higher than this one, and this is pretty competitive with it, so that was pretty cool to see. It's also interesting to look at here how the Chewy G Box did. Uh, that was a mini PC we looked at about two or three months ago. It was running the same processor as this one, but it had no active cooling system, just a metal plate for that processor to sort of dissipate heat from. It didn't do a very good job of that. And you can see here the score is significantly lower uh, on that Chewy box, given the fact that it's not able to cool itself as well. We'll have more on that in a few minutes. Overall, a pretty decent performance out of that web benchmark. We also, of course, had very good performance on Microsoft Word. It was rendering our newsletter template very quickly and very quickly rendering text when we were moving graphics around and stuff. It really does seem like a pretty decent uh, multi-purpose general use PC. So let's move on to some games now, the fun stuff. We've got Rocket League running here. Uh, lowest possible settings at 720p. We were getting between 35 and 40 frames per second. Not bad for a mini PC. Uh, this is another reason why you want to have that dual channel memory installed to get that performance. Uh, we did try to turn it up to 1080p. The results were not as good, but it was very consistent. Uh, at 720p, as you can see here. Uh, we also decided to load up GTA 5, given how well Rocket League was running. And believe it or not, it actually did somewhat decently at 720p, around 20 frames per second or so, sort of playable there. Uh, we then turned it down to 800 by 600, and we got about 30 frames per second, give or take, which isn't bad. Again, we turned all the settings way down, but it's unusual sometimes for these mini PCs to be able to run these games well at all, so that was good to see. And then we tried to push our luck and run the new version of Doom on it. Uh, that one did not fare as well, about 9 to 12 frames per second at 720p with the lowest settings. So I think if you can uh, run something that's within the performance profile of one of these Gemini Lake processors, it's going to do very well on here, and it will be very consistent uh, throughout your gameplay. Whatever you see the game doing initially is what you're probably going to get throughout the entire uh, gameplay session you're running there. We're going to look at some benchmarks now. We'll begin exploring some of the thermal performance on this as well. Uh, on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 3,560. Uh, that actually does better uh, than the J4005 NUC did, uh, primarily because we have a quad-core processor in here that can handle the physics test better uh, than that dual-core NUC can do. But nonetheless, it's performing uh, better in some areas than that one did. And then against that Chewy G-Box with the same Gemini Lake processor, uh, the Pepper Jobs here does much better, as you can see. And I think that's due to the fact that it has a very effective cooling system. And on the 3D Mark Fire Strike stress test, which measures how well the computer can do under load for an extended period of time, uh, we got a score of 98% there, as you can see. Uh, you can also see the temperatures that were measured on the processor, 62 degrees Celsius and 143.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that to the Chewy G-Box, again, with the same processor without the active cooling. Uh, that one got a failing grade of 90.7%. 97% is passing. And you can see it's running a lot hotter as well. So it's really trying to keep that processor from getting too hot again by slowing it down. And I decided to explore this a little bit more with a, a few more tests just to see exactly what was going on with this thing. So what you're seeing on screen right now is the Chewy G-Box running a little stress test called PowerMax. And what this does is it just runs the processor at 100%. 
uh, just to see what it might do to the computer in the process. And the G-Box started off just fine, but about 20 seconds in, it stepped down to 1.6 gigahertz from a max of 2.3 gigahertz. Now on the Pepper Jobs here, we ran the same exact test and it never throttled down. It went up to 2.3 and it stayed there uh, for uh, as long as we were running the test. It just didn't stop. It kept going at that consistent clock speed. And that's because in the BIOS on the system, they have prevented it uh, from engaging that underclocking. And then of course the cooling system is able to keep the processor at a consistent temperature. So we did measure the processor temperature. It stayed steady at 62 degrees Celsius throughout, uh, and it was pretty consistent and nothing crashed. And over an extended period of time, uh, the system was able to continue doing what it was doing without any ill effects. So I think they've done a nice job here with the cooling system to keep that processor running at its maximum potential. And now what you're looking at here is a kilowatt that was measuring power consumption when we put the computer under load. It was maxing out at around 10 watts or so for the entire system. And then when it was idle, we were seeing about four to four and a half watts of power usage. So it does step down when it's not under load. So it's not always going to be running the processor at that higher power consumption. Now the fan noise on this machine is not bad. Uh, it's certainly going to be noticeable in a very quiet room, but I think if you are using it in a home theater environment, for example, and it's set across the room from you, you probably won't hear it. The fan doesn't come on all that often. It's only when the computer is under load that it does switch on. And one of the things we noticed when we were capturing some of the game footage was that the laptop we were using to capture that footage had a louder fan than we were hearing out of the Pepper Jobs PC. Uh, the case will warm up quite a bit, so just bear that in mind. But overall, a uh, pretty quiet fan, but it is something you will hear if you are sensitive to fan noise, especially if you're in a completely quiet room. Uh, so it won't be as quiet, of course, as a fanless PC, but again, not bad. Uh, we also ran Cody to do some more home theater tests. The Jellyfish test file here uh, ran successfully. That is a 140 megabit 4K file, HEVC. Uh, the Gemini Lake chips can decode that in hardware. That ran fine. We hooked it up to the home theater receiver. We were able to have it successfully switch our TV into 24P, which is a uh, important thing for me. Uh, I was able to do that, no problem. It also was able to pass lossless audio to the receiver, so that was good. Uh, just know though that it doesn't support HDR, uh, so that might be a deal breaker for some of you 4K home theater buffs out there, but it is good, uh, especially at 1080p and with HEVC files. So that was a good thing. And one last thing to check out here, and that is Linux. We've got Ubuntu 18.10 running here, booted up just fine like it does on most of these Gemini Lake devices we play with. Uh, the Wi-Fi worked, the Bluetooth worked, the audio works, the video seems to be working fine, and overall a Decent Linux experience, I think. So if you wanted to run an alternative operating system on here, you can. It does come with a Windows license, of course. So you have Windows built in, but you could, of course, maybe install Linux on the SSD or use an external drive or something like that. Uh, seems to work just fine here. And the performance is just as good here as it was in Windows. No sluggishness and overall a very decent Linux performer and certainly a very good performing device on Windows as well. And I have to say, I'm just pleased with this overall because there's been a focus here on making it run better. It's not a gimmick. They cool it down better so they can run it at its full potential all the time versus only 20 or 30 seconds on some of the other ones we sometimes play with. And that makes a difference here. I think this will do very well as a Plex server, for example. Other tasks where you're just putting it under constant load should do better as well. The cooling system seems to be uh, just the right fit for the processor to keep it running at that uh, performance level all the time. Again, we didn't see any issues with it in our testing, both in the benchmarks, but also in just general use. And it's just a cut above what we've seen uh, from other PCs you might be looking at that are powered with this chipset. So definitely give it a look when it's available worldwide, which should be uh, very shortly. I'll put a link down below in the video description as to where you can find one of these things. And I'm pretty pleased with it so far. I'm gonna try to maybe in a future video run a Plex server on this one too, just to get a feel for that. Uh, this does support hardware transcoding in Plex. So if you're looking to do some media serving with something like this, this might be a good pick as well. Again, uh, because its performance will stay consistent all the time. So I think we'll probably do a little bit more with this one in the 
weeks to come. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I'm, I hope to have covered all of the things that you might be looking for, but if I missed anything, do ask and we will probably do a few follow-ups or have something on my weekly wrap-up show to answer some of those additional questions. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.